I honed the inside of the cylinder with this uh, cylinder hone three or four minutes of it just enough to kind of clean it up a little bit that's done on my Rockwell variable speed drill press and the piston itself has been turned down and we got a pretty decent fit That's what that looks up like. And I found out that it's Delrin plastic that we have here. I didn't know Delrin made black plastic, but this is Delrin. Turns real nice. And uh, ready now to start making the uh, part on the end of the piston rod that will connect to the crank. I've been working all morning on this engine and making a little progress. I do have the piston installed. I cut off the piston rod to the right length and I made this connecting rod part here out of hex stock. And I've uh, cut off the main shaft and made a few adjustments. And at least I'm at to the point now where I can uh, turn the engine over. We haven't drilled any of our steam ports yet. But it's turning over and I'm checking for tight spots and uh, got some adjustments and fitting to do. There's always a lot of fitting on any engine. And one thing that I got to do, I think I mentioned that I'm going to have to make a new casting here for this and I got to change the uh, stroke just slightly, make the stroke a little bit shorter than what I originally had uh, planned on. So we're back to pattern making and uh, adjusting and I'd say we got six hours work once the casting is made and uh, possibly ready for sea trials. Okay the time has come to drill the steam ports and I'll show you how I'm going to lay those out. There's a total of uh, four of them, two on the top and two on the bottom and when I drill those uh, later on they'll, the holes will come out uh, here. One, two, three, and four. I do not believe in uh, laying these out according to any dimension. What I do is uh, use I transfer them. Now I made a little transfer punch. It's just out of soft steel, 3 16 diameter. I put a little point on the lathe. It took one minute to make it. I also cut off an inch and a half piece of the uh, 3 16 stock without any points on it. And uh, here's what I'm going to do. Notice how I have oriented uh, the uh, crankshaft here so it's in the horizontal position to the right. Now in the top here in the bore we've got a hole that was drilled some time ago and I'm going to insert the little transfer punch in there as far as it, uh, it'll go and I can feel it touching this uh, casting. Then I'm going to take my large vice grips which is still made in America because I can't strike that with a hammer. I can't get in there. So what I'm going to do is pinch this real hard and that will leave a mark on there. Then I'm going to rotate this uh, 180 degrees and do the same thing on the other side. So I'm going to do that right now and then I'll take it apart and uh, show you the little marks. I have transferred the two holes and I center punched them since I transferred them because they weren't real deep. It was a soft punch. So I took this punch and center punched them just a little bit deeper. And then I marked them uh, with this so that they would show up on the camera. So those are uh, the top ones. Now I'm going to drill those 3 16 all the way through. I'll use a pilot first so they don't move on me. Because if you let those move on you at this point, the work is spoiled. I need to drill those two before I mark these and you'll see why here in a moment. And there they are. I drilled them 3 16 all the way through. And they come out on the back. Now we need two more on the bottom and I'll show you how we're going to lay those out. Isn't this fun? Sure beats watching uh, Nancy Grace, doesn't it? Now I'm taking that other little 3 16 pin that I made and uh, cleaned the ends off of it. That's simply going to be an alignment pin that I'm going to stick in here. I know I'm in the way here. 
sticking it through that hole and then tilt the uh, I felt it go into one of the holes now that aligns it and now I'm going to be able to transfer the bottom holes with this uh, little transfer punch and the blue pliers because you see I'm not able to do it uh, lay them out the other way because the piston rod would be in the way and the bottom flange that's why I'm doing it the way I'm describing right here okay here I am at the bottom end and that's the transfer punch and maybe you can see all the way on the other end that's the, uh, the alignment pin that is in one of the holes and I take the big blue channel lock just like this and uh, just give it a good squeeze I can feel it making an impression in the soft aluminum then I'm going to uh, go down to the other end and move that pin into the other hole and come down to this end and vice uh, channel lock it again on the other side and then we know that all of those holes are going to line up and that's so much better than attempting to do it with some kind of a dimension drawing of course I don't have a drawing anyway there's the first two holes I drilled and uh, now I've pilot drilled those with about a sixteenth inch bit probably not going to show up and I'm going to drill them three sixteenths now and that's the setup on my old Walker Turner drill press which I like because it's real accurate and has never been abused it belonged to a man that repaired musical instruments so it got rather late use and now I'll drill those holes all four holes have been drilled and I'm confident that they're drilled in the right spot. Now, I guess I didn't explain uh, what these uh, holes are for but they're the steam inlets and steam exhaust I guess you'd say but in my case it'll be for the air. I notice those come out on the back side so the two that I put a little arrow on will be the exhaust and the other uh, two will be the inlets or if you want it to run the other way you would just reverse that. I'm going to let the exhaust just come out as you see it uh, where the little arrows are but as far as the inlet is concerned the two of them have to be tied together with plumbing and that can be done with tubing, a plastic tubing, copper tubing or in fact we can have some internal holes drilled in here from several different ways and uh, then just have one single uh, inlet on the side. I may do it that way but usually I get anxious and I, I do some temporary plumbing to get the thing running and then if I'm in the mood I'll come back and refine it a little bit. But uh, that's what those holes are for and it's most important that they be in the exact uh, right spot and uh, this is in fact is what makes an oscillating or wobbler engine so easy to make because uh, those are the valves. So the valving at this point is essentially done and there wasn't any extra parts to make. I'm getting real anxious on this thing so I'm going to try to test run it. I put the head on with just two bolts and same thing on the bottom and there's no gaskets in there. I took the time to uh, put two pieces of tubing in here, one on the top and one on the bottom and they're connected with the plastic tubing that's all temporary and then I drilled a hole here which uh, intersects this other one and effectively provides air to both the top and the bottom and, uh, and the exhaust is the other two over here so it is ready to run so we've got some air here and I'm going to uh, I've got to set it 20 pounds per square inch and in just a moment here I'm going to connect that with this piece of tubing and we'll see what happens.